This is the Suzuki GSX S 1000 GX. Could this be the bike of 2024? Eichmann 2023 had an endless sea of new metal, but standing tall and proud, glimmering away on the Suzuki stand, was Suzuki's first step into the crossover sector, the 2024 GSX S 1000 GX. Now we've already had a first sit on the GSX 8R sporty middleweight, and now is a turn for a deep dive on the GX Tora. So powering this beast, we've got an inline four 999cc superbike heart. I've always seen on the GSX S 1000 GT that this is very much based on. Now this belts out 150 brake horsepower at 11,000 RPM and 106 newton meters of torque at 9,250 RPM. This is thanks to Suzuki's drive mode selector, so it's all put down smoothly and exactly how you want it. There's three modes to select from, active, basic, and comfort. Yes, it also includes a bi-directional quick shifter, so up and down, cruise control, and some Suzuki intelligent ride system gadgetry, which includes a six-axis IMU, a ride-by-wire throttle, and an assist and slipper clutch with low RPM assist. Now that in fact works really nicely to feed in some revs when you're engaging the clutch. Hand in stop start scenarios and it's something I particularly enjoyed when I used it on the VStrom 800RE launch. Check out my review video for more on that. So the motor's tried and tested, it's going to be nice and smooth and really nice to work with so let's move on to the electrics. There's plenty here, but let's dive in a bit further to the electronic gadgetry on hand. The six axis Bosch IMU feeds the semi-active electronic suspension and seven stages of traction control, which integrates lift control and the new roll torque control. As I say, it's a new debut there and it steps in to adjust the torque according to the bike's lean angle based on the traction control setting. Very smart indeed. The smart IMU also works with the lean angle, <laughs> lean angle. The smart IMU also works with the lean angle sensitive ABS and it feeds the suspension for adjustments to the floating ride control and Suzuki road adaptive stabilization as you ride to suit the road conditions. Very smart. Now that's not to mention the slope dependent control, the one push easy start, and the smartphone integration on the 6.5 inch dash where you can then also set your custom ride settings and all of the ride bits. There's genuinely so much tech contributing to the ride on this new GX that I've barely even touched the surface and explored them to their full extent. This really could be a perfect place to set up for a long tour and I'd imagine they will also consider radar gadgetry in future iterations to rub shoulder to shoulder with upper premium options like the Tracer 9 GT Plus from Yamaha. Again, my review up there, very good bike, and this could be a very worthy adversary for it. Next up, let's touch on the suspension and brakes. Though many do think of this new GX as the GT on stilts, it's much more than that. Longer travel suspension, of course, with increased ground clearance, of course, and a tweaked, more comfortable upright riding position will be found here. So it'll be good for taller riders like myself at six foot three. A first for Suzuki is the inclusion of semi-active electronic suspension setup from Showa, and that's inverted forks up front paired to a link type coil spring at the rear. Both have 150 mil travel. So enough to get by on any road, not quite enough off-road, but I don't think you'll be looking at this for any off-road usage. You can preset the suspension to be hard, medium, soft, and then you can customize the setting to suit any riding you want and need within that. As it's semi-active, the suspension will react to any heavy braking or acceleration to smooth out the ride with the floating ride control stepping in. There's a dedicated handlebar switch up front to switch between auto and four manual modes. So you've got single rider, rider plus luggage, rider with pillion and maybe pillion plus luggage. And you can manually set the preload settings at the rear. Auto can be plus or minus by three increments and manual modes can be plus or minus by four. So you can tweak it to your heart's content. For braking power, you'll find four pot Brembo mono... <laughs> blum, blum, blum. For braking power, you'll find four pot Brembo monoblock calipers mounted to twin 310 mil discs up front with a single rear disc. They're mounted to 17 inch Dunlop Sport Max Road Sport 2 hoops front and rear. So they're more road focused with a wide rear tire width, which is the same on the GT. You've also got a palatable curb mass of 232 kilograms and the seat height is a standard 845 mil with a 1470 mil wheelbase. Overall, I'd say that riding this will feel like you're floating about on a magical carpet that you can tune. Perfect. Number four the all important wallet check. So for 2024, Suzuki has already announced a price and they placed this GSX S 1000 GX with an on the road price of 14,499 pounds. They've also noted that the first customers can potentially have their bikes by Christmas. Christmas come early, potentially. Compared to the GSX S 1000 GT, which is 12,699 pounds, and then the plus trim of that variant, which is 13,779 pounds, 
so it includes the luggage. So the GX does become the second most expensive bike from Suzuki after the £18,199 Hayabusa. <sighs> Busa bros. Just note as well, the GX doesn't come with luggage either, but like the V-Strom range, I'd hazard a guess that a tour model will be announced in the future, which will include luggage. Take a quick look at the rivals. The Yamaha Trace 9 GT is a similar spec and a tad cheaper at £13,110. The Honda NT 1100 is £12,499 and the Motokuzi V100 Mandelo S is £15,750. That has a semi-active suspension. We tested it. Have a look and see what we thought about it. There's also the Triumph Tiger 900 GT Pro, around about £14,000. And I did a whole touring motorcycles feature that has a good few of these comparisons on there. So where do you think that the GX will fit on the 2024 list? Let us know in the comments down below. Up next, style and swagger. <laughs> Due to land in three colours, Suzuki's trademark metallic Triton Blue, the Glass Sparkle Black, and a new pearl matte shadow green. My personal favorite is the green. I think it looks really nice, especially in person. Though the silver fairings look a little bit nicer in black. So if it was the green with black fairings, I think that would look really nice. Up front, you've got the stacked LED headlights as well. And overall, the style on this bike is similar to the GT, but just looks a little bit taller and more filled out. So this GX style for me is spot on. You'll also notice it's the same twin spar aluminum frame with an aluminum swing arm, as you'll also see in the GSXR range. And you've got a lightweight sub frame that you'll recognize from the GT model as well. And judging from first reactions, it appears that many touring riders have had their heads turned by this, whether it's seasoned journalists or just seasoned touring riders or just your average passerby. I do have to agree, other tour models will be given a run for their money here in my opinion. Number six, Tour de Force. Tourability. So touching on the tourability, you'll find some smartphone connectivity here with maps, music, phone calls, etc., all accessed through the 6.5 inch color TFT screen. Of course, you can then get the smartphone app and do all bits you like to there, as well as customize your riding modes through that TFT. So it should be very good. And knowing Suzuki, they keep it nice and simple and very intuitive. You've got a 19 litre tank and it's quoted with a 45.5 miles per gallon figure from Suzuki. As always, real world riding might return about 40 miles per gallon. It's always a bit lower than they quote, but even then that should be quite good for a nice tour distance between fill-ups. Your rider positioning is tweaked here to be a little bit more upright than the GT. And you get a new wide rubber mounted handlebar to try and subdue any unwanted vibes during longer rides, as well as give you that good feel on the road. Do like a good wide handlebar when you're riding along. The screen is adjustable with three steps and hand guards are standard fit as well. So all in, long days in the saddle should not be an issue whatsoever here. And you can switch on the cruise control and munch down the motorway miles just to get to your destination. A quick note on the panniers, you've got 36 litre panniers as an accessory fit option and the full touring gear is no doubt gonna be available as OEM parts. So I'm talking top boxes and heated grips and all of the Suzuki accessory catalog is no doubt gonna be available here as well. You could also, as I say, just wait for a tour model and see what sort of pennies you can save by including the panniers and the top box, stuff like that in a GX Tour. So number seven, final thoughts, just a few of my thoughts to round us up. Now this was by no means a surprise model. It had been teased and expected for a long time, but the final product here really does put the cat amongst the pigeons. Price-wise, it's not the cheapest out there, but it did cause an almighty stir when it was revealed to the ICMA crowd this year. Especially myself and Felix, we were pretty much wowed by the GSX AR and then this to follow. Good stuff. Initial reactions have been very interesting and given it's working from an established framework with some impressive tech thrown in here, the GSX S 1000 GX could be a proper touring option straight out of the blocks. Very interested to see how this one does in 2024. Hopefully we can get our hands on this as soon as possible and let you guys know what we think. So could this be the motorcycle of 2024? Drop a comment down below and let us know what you think. Let the debate in the comments begin. We'll be eagerly seeing what you guys have to say about this GX. Do hope you love the lowdown on the Suzuki GSX S 1000 GX. Stay tuned and subscribe for more 2024 content from Eichma and beyond. If you rate the bike, hit the like button. Really appreciate it if you do. And I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao from me. Ciao, bye.